Today we're going to cover the types of hair color. This theory will be in your newest Milady book and we're starting on the bottom of page 620. When we talk about hair color, it can either be oxidative or non, whoa that was bad, oxidative. So it's going to fall in one of those categories. Oxidative hair colors will use a developer that looks like this. So this will be your permanent and demi-permanent hair colors. Non-oxidative, non, no, developer, and that will be your temporary and semi-permanent hair colors. On page 620 to 621, they have a chart. We're gonna skip this. We're gonna go over each hair color individually. This chart is just showing you bullet points or main things you need to know about the hair color. Top of page 622, we're gonna go to temporary hair colors. So temporary hair colors don't use a developer. So again, that means they are non-oxidative. No developer, non-oxidative. Whatever's in the tube, you don't need to mix it with anything. You pour it out, spray it on, color it on, paint it on. Whatever you're doing, it is what it is. So temporary hair colors make a physical change, not a chemical change. You're physically seeing the change with your eyes, but it's not going inside the hair shaft and making any kind of chemical alterations. Pretend this is a single strand of hair and we cut it in half and it's blown up. Like we talked about in a previous video, the very middle layer is the medulla. And remember, it doesn't do much or have much to do with hair coloring. So we don't really need to talk about that. It's just there. The next layer is the cortex. So the outer layer right here is the cuticle. And remember, they look like shingles or fish scales. It kind of overlaps and I'll show you a blown up picture. So for example, permanent hair color, which we'll get into in a minute, slips through the shingle, the little crack, and lives here. It's doing a chemical change. But temporary hair color has these really large color molecules. They're too big to fit inside the crack. So what they do is they just sit here on the outside. It doesn't make its way inside to do any sort of chemical change. Typically, temporary color is gonna last one to three shampoos. An example of temporary color is this. What is this? L'Oreal Magic Root. Did it do anything? So it's your sprays like this, mascara wands, hair chalk, Halloween sprays. It's temporary. As soon as I shampoo my hair, this is going to go away. Temporary hair colors are used just for fun. Halloween, holidays. Would you do it for a birthday party? Yes, you could. You can also use them to neutralize unwanted tones. Think of like a purple shampoo. Those could be considered temporary, also semi-permanent. I personally categorize them as temporary. They're not very long lasting, especially the, the one from Sally's Shimmer Lights. It's a purple shampoo that temporarily neutralizes the blonde. It doesn't correct the blonde, it doesn't tone it out, it's just a temporary fix. Temporary colors can also be used to enhance colors. So if you had a darker shade of brown, you could put a temporary hair color over that to enhance it. Again, it's not going to last long, one to three shampoos. Here's an example of a temporary color. This is Dark Envy. It's a green-based shampoo that will help neutralize red tones, but it's a very temporary fix and it doesn't do a whole lot of change. Now on page 623, with semi-permanent hair color. Semi-permanent hair color is a deposit only hair color. A good example for this is Ex Mondo. This is one of my favorite colors. You take this color out of the bowl and you put it on your hair and that's it. Just like temporary hair color, you don't have to mix it with a developer. It just is what it is. So because it's not mixed with a developer, it makes it a non-oxidative color. Remember, non-oxidative, non-oxidative, no developer. Your book says this lasts about three to eight shampoos. I find, especially this brand, it lasts a little bit longer, but it depends on a lot of factors. Your hair type, texture, what kind of water you're using, what kind of shampoo you're using. There's a lot of things to factor in. How this hair color works. Again, this is the piece of hair cut in half. Cuticle is the outer layer, the fish scales. Cortex here, and in the very middle, medulla, we don't need. The hair color molecules are smaller than temporary. This is the temporary, let's just say, these big marbles. These are like little googly eyes, little bitty guys. Remember the temporary, the big girls, big boys that sit on the outside because they're so big. These are smaller, so they can sit on the outside, but they can also kind of get in here a little bit. They don't have any developers, so they can't really get in here to do chemical changes, but they're getting inside a little bit of that cuticle. So that's what makes them stay a little bit longer than a temporary hair color. Semi-permanent hair color, it's not going to lighten the hair. You can apply semi-permanent hair color on any color of hair, but it's only going to look like this, this pure green, if your hair is super, super blonde, like a level 10. Generally, semi-permanent hair colors are your fantasy colors like this. So the lighter your hair, the brighter it's going to look. If you put this on a level five, it's not gonna do much, unless you were getting more technical and use using it as a toner to neutralize out unwanted red. So you can use semi-permanents like this for toning and filling the hair. The bottom of 623, demi-permanent hair color. And this is my favorite type of hair color. I use this most often. Demi-permanent hair colors are your 
oxidative hair colors. They have to be paired with a type of developer to work. Shades EQ is a great example of a demi-permanent hair color. A lot of times a demi-permanent will be used as a color refresher. So let's say you colored your client's hair with a level five permanent hair color. She comes in four or six, whatever weeks later, and she says it's looking dual. You don't want a compact permanent hair color because if you put a five over a five over a five over a five, eventually it's gonna start looking black and it overloads the hair, making the hair brittle, weak, it can snap, it can break. What you can do instead is take a level five, a level six, and put a demi-permanent hair color over that to refresh the color. So not only does it refresh the color, it adds shine, it adds depth, it can add tone. If she wants to add a red tone to it, if it's looking really dull, probably needs some warmth warmth so 5n with 5r refresh it really pretty color going back to our blown up hair shaft there's the cuticle medulla the molecules are able to now go inside here it can slip through these cracks and start depositing color because it is oxidative mixed with some sort of developer it is able to not only make a physical change change the color darken it tone it enhance it it can make the chemical change to make it last a little bit longer. But here's where demi-permanent color gets a little bit tricky because demi-permanent color has two categories that it's gonna fall on or fall into. You have acidic and you have alkaline. On the pH scale, hair is right here. It's a 4.5 to a 5.5. So this is your hair. Acidic demi-permanents are no lift. So they're not going to lift natural hair color at all. They are deposit only colors. The pH range for those is 6.7. So it's right here. 6.7, so it's on the acidic side because in the middle, neutral is water. These will blend gray with an existing color. It's not going to cover gray. Really good for people transi transitioning. I can't speak today. <laughs> <laughs> that eventually want to go full gray or for men who like to do the gray blending. They can minimize brassy tones. You can use them as a toner. Like this one, this is what I toned my hair with right now in the last video we did, 8VB, level eight, violet blue. So it's gonna tone out yellow and orange tones. Shades EQ Gloss is considered an acidic demi-permanent hair color. Demi-permanent hair colors are oxidative. So remember, they have to have something to pair with it. Be a developer, a processing solution, depends on the hair color you're using. For this Shades EQ, it pairs with the Shades EQ processing solution. So this activates this. Now for alkaline demi-permanents. Here's the middle of the scale. Alkaline is about an eight. So the difference when you're going to alkaline is it can lift hair just a little bit. To remember that, alkaline is bleach. Bleach lifts, lightens. But we're talking it lifting a half a level. It is not a whole lot of lift. And that's gonna be on natural hair. Typically the rule is color cannot lift color. So if you put this on already colored hair, it's not going to lift it. Alkaline demi-permanent colors give a deeper solid color. It's more opaque, so it blocks out the color underneath. Whereas the acidic colors are more translucent. It's more so for me anyway to change tone or use as a toner. If you're looking for a deeper color, you're going to use the alkaline color. So it gets a little confusing because in the umbrella of demi-permanent, you could have acidic or alkaline and how you pick what you're gonna use is really depending on what you're trying to do. Demi-permanent will last about 12 to 24 shampoos. According to your book, that is a very big range, 12 to 24. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it goes back to hair type texture. What kind of water are they using? What kind of shampoo are they using? On the bottom of 624, we're gonna go to permanent hair color. Permanent hair color can lighten the hair and deposit hair color in a single process. And it can do this because its pH is between nine and 11. So it's more alkaline. And these are the ones that are mixed with the higher developer, 10, 20, 30, 40, if you wanna use 50. You can cover grays 100% with permanent hair color. You can darken hair color, you can lighten hair color, or you can just match it. Permanent hair colors contain uncolored precursors, dye precursors, and these are called aniline derivatives. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. We'll call them ADs on their own. They're colorless, they're like little ghosts. When you mix the uncolored dye precursors with a developer or hydrogen peroxide, they go through a chemical reaction and turn into hair color molecules inside the hair shaft. But at the beginning, remember, they're colorless little ghosts just moving through here. They're able to enter the little doors. They can just glide on through just like a ghost and they start turning bigger and forming a home here in the cortex because it's activating with the developer. So this in turn changes the color of the hair because they've turned into bigger molecules so they're trapped. They cannot go back out this little gap. They're too big. That locks in the color and what makes it long lasting or permanent. And your book's diagram is actually a lot better. How they're tiny, they're able to move through here, and then how they turn to 
big molecules and get trapped in here and can't move back out. So they're stuck, making them permanent. And that only happens when the hair color is mixed with a developer. Just this tube of color, if I pour it out and put it on my head, it does nothing. It has to have the developer to work. Page 625, natural based and metallic hair colors. These two types of hair colors are not used in the salon, but it's important to understand them because you'll have a lot of clients who do use them at home and come to see you. And in return, it's going to change how you formulate and how their hair reacts to the hair color. Natural based hair colors are known as vegetable dye. Vegetables, natural. You can use herbs, nutshells, flowers, moss. The best example of this is henna. Henna is made from the leaf spark and roots of the henna shrub or henna tree. Natural henna comes in one shade and it's a burnt orange reddish color. They do add more chemicals to make it black, different colors are usually darker and it lasts four to six weeks, but honestly, a lot of times it lasts a lot longer. Metallic hair color. Men. A great example of metallic hair color is just for men. These are progressive hair colors. They contain metallic salts that change the hair color gradually. So this is gonna be your just for men, a lot of the box colors, box dyes at the supermarket. The hair color can be very unpredictable and it doesn't react well to professional hair color. If you have box hair dye, let's just say just for men, and then that person goes to the salon and gets their hair done, it can have a lot of negative effects on the hair. It can damage the hair, it can heat up, it can smoke, it can swell the hair because of the metallic salt. It's really unpredictable. And you'll find this happens a lot when you go through your consultation and ask your client what their previous hair color history is. A lot of times they don't want to be truthful about that, that they've used box hair color. They find it to be embarrassing, which it's not. It's very important for us to know because that's how we're going to formulate and work around that. We can't give predictable results if we don't have an upfront, honest answer of what's going on with the hair right now. And your metallic hair colors, they also last about four to six weeks. So that wraps up our types of hair colors. It's a lot of information, but a quick recap. Just remember hair color can either be non-oxidative or oxidative. Non meaning no developer. Temporary, semi-permanent. Oxidative meaning developer. Permanent, demi-permanent. Demi-permanent branches off into acidic or alkaline. And then the two that you're going to see for at-home use, metallic, metallic just for men, natural, henna, vegetable dye, natural vegetables.